Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Today I am going to discuss the worst year in the history of civilization. And perhaps, to your surprise, no, it's not 2020. However, there is a connection between the two. The most accurate prophet of the future is history. Generally, catastrophic events at a global scale come in cycles. They often follow the same pattern and they produce similar results. What was the worst year in history? Ask a medieval historian and they will most likely tell you that it was the year 536 AD. What happened in AD 536? Scientists believe that early that year, a massive volcano erupted in Iceland that affected most of the civilized world. Europe, parts of Asia, and the Middle East were in abject darkness for about 18 months. A mysterious fog covered most of these continents. Ancient sources write that there wasn't a clear view of the sun nor of the moon for this length of time. It is estimated that temperatures plummeted on average by 35 to 40 degrees. The civilized world plunged to record low temperatures. Extreme cold weather caused havoc in much of the world of that time. It's reported that China even had snowfall during the summer of AD 536. It is the coldest the planet has been in the last 2300 years. Of course, this caused havoc on the world economy and resources. Crops failed, famines broke out, and millions of people perished because of the conditions. Although it is hard to estimate the numbers because of the lack of records for this time. But worse yet, the year was the beginning of what was to come. Events from AD 536 had lingering effects and trigger triggering consequences. Due to the cooler temperatures in hot places such as Africa, deadly diseases were able to thrive and multiply. In addition, malnutrition suffered from the famines weaken the immune system of the population in general. As a result, a worldwide pandemic broke out. The bubonic plague struck the world with fury. By the year 541, the plague hit Europe and the Byzantine Empire. Estimates of the number of deaths are as high as 100 million people. The plague is commonly referred to as the Justinian Plague, named after the Roman Emperor of the Byzantine Empire who ruled in Constantinople. Some records say that as many as 10,000 people perished a day during the plague in that city. On average, around 5,000 people were dying of the disease daily. It was so bad and there were so many dead bodies that they could not bury them all. Some were thrown into the sea, while others were dumped in massive ditches. These events caused a major political shift in the world. Up to this point in history, the Byzantine Empire was expanding rapidly, regaining a lot of the territory lost by the ancient Roman Empire. Justinian was pushing out barbarian kingdoms in Spain, Italy, as well as in North Africa. The catastrophes that were precipitated by the eruption of the volcano put a halt to the empire's expansion. Just a few years after the plague, a smaller Persian ar army defeated a Byzantine army in four, 544 AD. The Roman Empire never recovered after the plague. It is believed that this created a vacuum, which allowed the Arab conquest that took place less than a century from these events. The Muslims captured Jerusalem in 636, 637 AD, and subsequently converted most of Africa, the Middle East, and parts of Europe by the sword. 
So we see that catastrophic events have triggering consequences that change the social, geopolitical landscape of world affairs. A similar scenario took place around 800 years after the events we just discussed. In the 14th century, the 1300s that is, the world had a shift in climate change. Temperatures dropped globally. The world got cooler. This proved to be catastrophic and it led to crop failures. Famine, disease, which killed about 80% of sheep and cattle. This period is known as the Great Famine of 1315 through 1317. It took Europe until 1322 to recover. This period was characterized by an increase in crime, violence, death, and even infanticide. To top it all off, a decade and a half later, the 100 Years War broke out between England and France. It also involved other nations. These catastrophes left the populations weakened, malnourished, and vulnerable to disease. A decade after the start of the war, the Justinian plague would revisit the world again. It is known historically as the Black Death or the Black Plague. This new outbreak began in China. Some historians believe that half of the population in China died as a result of the plague. In some cities, the death toll was as high as 90% of the population. The plague arrived in Constantinople in 1347 and the rest of Europe a year later. By 1349, 50 to 60 percent of the population in the British Isles were dead from the Black Death. Estimates say that perhaps as many as 200 million people perished during this pandemic. The result was that Europe lost most of its workforce. Therefore, the cost of labor skyrocketed. Some people say that it was the beginning of the end for serfdom. The living conditions of the poor who survived the plague improved greatly. However, Europe was once again weakened by these events and just a few years later, Constantinople fell to the Islamic conquest. The Ottoman Empire trampled over what was once the seat of the Roman Empire. This opened the door for further incursions into Europe, which led to conversions by the sword. Today, Constantinople is a Muslim city, and Hagia Sophia, the great cathedral built by Justinian, was converted to a mosque. You see, these events have massive consequences worldwide. I won't go into detail with respect to World War I, which was also accompanied by a massive pandemic that killed around 100 million people. It is known as the Spanish flu. World War I was just the beginning of the horrors that were experienced in the 20th century. It led to the rise of fascism, communism, and World War II. Hundreds of millions of people perished and the world was reconfigured once again. These events bring great evil, but at the same time, the world is reorganized and ultimately there is a rebirth, a new beginning. Ultimately, good triumphs over evil and better times do come. Notwithstanding, let's not underestimate. The price that is paid is heavy. It is atrocious. Let us never forget that. After the events of the 13th century, the mood of Europe changed. Prior to the plague, there was a misunderstanding of God. Man mostly viewed God, Jesus, as unapproachable. You see it in the art of that time. The humanity of Jesus was lost. 
He's always depicted in a halo, and so is Mary, Joseph, and all the biblical characters. Even the saints of the early church were beyond human. The average citizen just lived a miserable life, and it was accepted as such. The world was evil. Everything was bad. There was only the hope of an afterlife, of which the church possessed absolute authority. You had to surrender to the mandates, superstitions, and rituals of a corrupt church to have any hope of entering into heaven. Life in this world was accepted as miserable, and there was a great chasm between mankind and God. They were alienated from the divine. The catastrophic events surrounding the Black Death brought a new mood to the Western world. Christian humanists rose up and they led Europe into the Renaissance. Latin, Renaissantia. In Spanish, Renacimiento, the new birth. It has been described as man's discovery of himself and the world. There was a new devotion to enjoying life, admiring nature and its beauty as part of the plan of God. Those who were leaders in the movement developed the Studia Humanitatis, the study of humanities, the liberal arts. They began to teach subjects such as history, literacy, grammar, poetry, philosophy, and rhetoric from the classical texts of the Greco-Roman world. The Renaissance led to the Reformation. The Reformation led to the Enlightenment, and the Enlightenment led to our modern day of science. The conditions of humans has improved greatly. God is able to bring good out of evil. After the catastrophes of the 20th century, America ultimately emerged as the superpower. The ideas of freedom, democracy, charity, religious liberty, human rights have improved the lives of most in the world. Ideas that were birthed in a Christian society, a Christian culture, developed and refined through much trial and error, yes, but which ultimately culminated in the greatest nation in the history of the world. And I refer you to Oxford historian Tom Holland, a secular humanist, but an honest scholar as proof of this fact. So here we are at the end of the 20th year of the 21st century. And many of the ideas of the 20th century are having a resurgence here in America. Marxism, a proven failure as a political system, is making a furious comeback. The rise of such movements has consequences. There are counter movements to these extreme ideologies. We are heading towards a clash of these ideas. And in the midst of all that, there is a pandemic. It all looks too familiar. These are trying times indeed, but expect things to get worse. Expect chaos, famine, civil unrest, war, economic collapse, perhaps. But as Christians, let us remain calm and trust in our God. Many Christians become dark and morbid during these trying times. Look at the history of Christianity and you will see this. Apocalyptic movements rise up to condemn the world and everyone in it while proclaiming that the end of the world is near. See, the problem is that the world has looked very bleak for many Christians throughout its history. If anyone had a reason to believe that the world was coming to an end, it was the Christians living in Europe during World War II. All the conditions existed for such a scenario, an apocalyptic end of the world. And indeed, many believed that it was the end. And let me remind you that we haven't seen anything compared to those living in ancient times. Try seeing the death of 60% of the people you know. 
60% of all your family members. How would that feel? Jesus said, it is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses. Jesus also said concerning that day and that hour, no one knows. Therefore, you must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect him. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom his master has set over his household to give them their food at the proper times? Blessed is the servant who his master will find so doing when he comes. Listen, what Jesus was saying is that our job is to be ready and to be faithful regardless of the conditions we're facing. Our duty is to continue to do good to everyone whenever there's an opportunity and especially to those who are of the household of faith. We wait for our Savior, but always doing our job, busy doing His work. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave your comments below. If you want us to cover any topic, write to us below. Please give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, may the peace and the love that comes from knowing Him fill your hearts.